And now for something completely different. Yo, I'm Delinquency D minus. My driver's license has been expired for two years, and today we're gonna take a look at Palm Poco. Released July 16th, 1994, Palm Poco is a family friendly Ghibli movie about the secret world of Japanese raccoon dogs. The film is rated PG for ball sacks, romance, murder, and humanity's will devouring nature. Through some fun narration, done by Raku Goka Shincho Kokonte III, we're told about Japanese development and deforestation, and that it's been harming the animals of Tama Hills. Then the scene changes to a raccoon war that introduces us to some of the main cast, and really hammers home that this is a movie about the Tanuki, or Japanese raccoon dog. When there are no people around, these little chumbos stand up on two legs instead of four. Kind of like this. It's actually a consistent theme in many pieces of Tanuki-related art to give them fat sacks and nuts that can just stretch to great lengths. So a very big part of this movie is literally just balls. The slam dunk to this meme is that while well, the entire cast is a walking comedy troupe for a number of reasons, most of them are memorable and have defining traits. You got Shokichi, who is more or less the main character, very level-headed and kind. Gonta, who is stubborn and often reckless. Granny Oroku and Grandpa Osho, the wise village elders, one feisty, one playful, both great mentors to the fluffy community, and a host of other memorable characters. But for the sake of brevity, here are a few more of them in a collage. This community of fuzzbows has to work together as their home is made smaller and smaller. The war they were fighting was one for food, one of many resources that is becoming scarce. The root cause of these unfortunate events are the humans who do be deforesting. In retaliation, the raccoons learn to transform. The extent to which they transform sometimes is ridiculous and it's very consistently fun. The reasons they transform are named early on in the plot and supplemented throughout the film in a very steady rise. The first reason, gain skill in the art of transformation and seek the wisdom of the legendary elder raccoons. Now the second reason is so they can play pranks and hopefully drive people away. But the ways in which the cast plays these pranks takes on two schools of thought, clever trickery and big spookies, or bloody murder. As the Tanuki work together, this difference in approach becomes an interesting point of contention. The arguments that arise in how to deal with the humans allow the fuzzballs to interact morally. These interactions further the traits they've been given, and the film honestly navigates this sense of community very well. There are many different mindsets, and they all either clash or shake hands, and the movie is better for the things that happen as a result. You really feel for the cast, the troubles they go through, and the losses they suffer, just as much as you feel their happiness and success. It's nice. And this is the general flow of the film taking you around the highs and lows of their lives as their world is flipped around. I'd really like to talk about some of the lows though, because sheesh. sheesh. Spoiler warning, this is where I start saying some things. I'm not gonna be long here, but skip to the next section to avoid. Three, two, one, now's your last chance. The raccoons actually do fucking commit murder. There are scenes where the fuzzy bitches go to war and smother people in ball sack. They run trucks off the road, cause havoc, numerous deaths, and millions of dollars in damage. There is a darkness in this movie, but it never gets let out. Some scenes bounce off the oh shit line or go a little bit past it, and then everything just kinda zooms back into the cozy zone, which makes me sad, but at the same time, it works. Tanuki are described as lazy, kind-hearted, and pranksters more than freedom fighters. This is also a family-friendly film, and I am all for what the experience provided. I got a little bored once or twice with all the cute raccoons just jumping across the screen all the time, but things do get kinda real. It's the use of this shocking material in contrast with the extreme light heartedness that reminds you amidst the raccoons falling in love and being funny that they are fighting for their lives that's it that's really the only critique i have the movie's great so we can move on the character design and animation are gorgeous which is pretty standard for studio ghibli and just as with many other ghibli movies there is a familiar yet distinct charm in everything when the little rascals transform it looks amazing the sound design is great there is obviously more of a push toward comfy or funny noises. 
The same QT rule kind of applies to the soundtrack of the film, with music more being played to fit a situation and feel appropriate rather than fit the overall theme. Watching the original Japanese dub having the narration be done by a professional Japanese storyteller is a great big chef's kiss. And honestly, that's the movie overall. The setting is fitting and explained well. The cast is fun and easy to enjoy. And the plot that they follow throughout the film is pretty good. You're definitely going to feel the anti-deforestation sentiment all throughout, but entwined in there is also a message of togetherness and how drastically lives can change through the years. So, the next time you want to sit down to relax, watch something that's comfy, a little dark at times, and leave you satisfied with a few things to think about, give Pompoko a shot. It is definitely worth your time. That's it. That's the video. If you liked it, consider watching another and maybe even subscribing. Anyway, thank you for watching. Later.